Well, Rob, really exciting news with the announcement that you've just made of Tom James signing from Cardiff Blues. Tell us a bit about him and, and how he's come about coming to the Chiefs. Yeah, I think he'll be a, uh, an exciting player for us. Um, you know, people are, are aware of how we're playing now. Uh, our outside backs get a lot of ball, and he's a guy who's a he's a natural game line breaker. And I think that's the biggest uh, the biggest thing we've identified with him. Um, and that we think he can add, you know, so that ability to break a line, and, and that's almost the most important skill now uh, to have as a back because defences are very solid. Um, we create a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities for for our backs, and you know he, he almost seems to do it by will, you know. And, and then then it's obviously for for us as a team to develop his, his finishing and distribution attributes around that. So I think for us, you know, he's got tremendous physical traits, very quick, as quick as anybody we've got here in the squad, uh, if not quicker. Uh, he's the right age and, and a player who's still developing. He's very ambitious, uh, wants to get back into the Wales, Wales set up. And I think he feels that he can develop his game by coming to us uh, and hopefully push himself back into that level. So a lot of things work for us. You know, the physical attributes are there, uh, the talent is there, and, and as I say, and we also see like a package that we can see improving and that's very important to us and we think we think he's someone who will very much suit the way we play uh, he's interested in coming to us because that's the way he wants to play and he wants to see plenty of ball um, you know and, and we will hopefully we can get him 10 to 15 touches of the ball in good carrying positions rather than rather than three or four a game and you know and he's still got a good try scoring record uh, in that scenario so for us you know an exciting player we you know we, we're always on the lookout to add pace to the team which is very important in the premiership but as I say also that kind of almost natural ability to beat defenders in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You've done a lot of recruiting of guys in terms of re-signing and that mm. this is your first foray into to bringing new faces in. Is, it's a busy time for you I'd imagine as a coach this time of year isn't it? Yeah it is and I think the 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 important thing is that we, we keep the character of the side and the character of the squad. That's probably the most single most important thing for me. And I think, you know, we've had a couple of meetings with Tom. Um, he know, kind of understands what we're about. Uh, and, and we feel comfortable. And I think when we feel comfortable with a signing, that's normally the best normally the best attribute I can I can put out there. And I think, it, it, you know, we're... we're we're one of those kind of teams that, uh, and another way I look at recruitment is, I'd rather miss out on guys than, than sign a sign one that I don't think will fit in. And uh, we tend to take a long time with our recruitment, and that can be seen now. You know, we haven't made any any recruitment up until now. Uh, we haven't got a lot of more recruitment to make. Pretty much whatever happens with our re-signings, and I think it kind of shows you that we're we're looking at stability and ongoing development more than anything else. That, that's that's what we see in this group. We've got an average age of around about 28 in the squad. My my thinking is, and I think most um, most people would agree that you, you know, peaking wise, age wise, um, the physicality of the side is probably this is something that should still develop over the next couple of seasons. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking at ways of developing pretty much primarily this group of players over a couple of years, and on top of that, adding the odd player who will who will maybe give us something different to what we've already got in the squad. That's something you've done over all the years you've been in the Premier. You aren't going to bring in wholesale mm. massive changes, literally maybe at best five or six at a time. Yeah. And I think, as I said, that's important. I mean, the culture that's within this side, I'm really, I'm really happy with. You know, they're a good set of players. They manage themselves very well. Uh, they keep each other in check very well. They keep their, their feet on the ground very well, and they enjoy doing what they're doing. Uh, and they've got a great work ethic. And those are kind of things that will always give you a, a solid foundation to doing, doing okay. What we have to do is add the bits and pieces each year that, that move us beyond being okay and give us the opportunity to challenge to be in the Heineken Cup or challenge to be towards the top four or push us on to the, being in the top four and pushing into, pushing into further things, looking at quarterfinals and semifinals. And we've got to keep adding that. But it isn't, a, as I said, it's, it's not something that happens overnight. You know, people, people have been talking about the Heineken Cup because we've just come out of that group. And as I said to a few people, you know, everyone's talking about Clermont, like I'm being favourites now. Well, they've been in the Heineken Cup for a long time. And I don't think they've been in the final. You know, they, they certainly haven't won one. And so it does slow. It takes a bit of progress. It takes a lot of learning. And you slowly develop your squad. You slowly develop the players you have. You bring through your own talent uh, that's kind of in the mould of the way you want the team to play. And we're starting to see that now as well for the first time. And, uh, you know, our academy is developing all the time. The way the players are coming through, uh, our coaching base is, is developing and broadening. Our conditioning staff is, is developing and broadening. You know, they're all, uh, our medical staff is, is improving and, as I say, broadening. And we're dealing with bigger Bigger, bigger groups of people in a in a more refined way, and I think all these things are just they're the little steps we need to take. And as a coach staff, we also need to keep learning about the things that have happened in the Heineken Cup and the, the top end Premiership games. And we are we're adding little things to our game as we go along. And I, I think the Leinster game, in some ways, was a was a really great marker for us because it it showed that within a couple of weeks we'd learned quite a lot. And we put some of those things into practice against Leinster, and we were very competitive. 
against a team that had to had to win the game, had to score four tries for pretty much the length of the game. You know that that game was in the balance pretty much till they kicked their last penalty, and that's the way we want to be. We want to be that really competitive side in every environment, and and slowly you you go from being competitive and winning some to being competitive and winning more than half to being competitive and winning three quarters and that, that's what we have to try and keep working towards. Talking to Tom about his move and that, he's, he's got a real hunger about him to mm. get back in that Welsh picture internationally wise and I'd imagine there's guys around the squad now that you, you want to see that same hunger now to push on, we've seen it with TJ, we've seen others like Gonzo mm. move away and play for Argentina but now I'd imagine you want more of your group to, to move on to that next yeah. stage. I think there's a reality in how a, how a club develops and I think for us our first year in the Premiership maybe maybe in our first couple of years a year and a half you know it was very much we wanted to be able to work with a group of players who were here and, and almost international course would probably have been a bit of a distraction to us and in some ways uh, probably favoured us that we didn't get disrupted and we kept that really solid group together and they played together and they trained together and we didn't have any I don't know, any distractions but the reality is if you want to develop as a side and develop as a club and, and bring in extra supporters you know you, you have to get your players at the club to be ambitious and you have to want them to want more than Premiership Rugby you know now every guy we've got here wants more than just Premiership Rugby they want to they want to push on and try and get international recognition for whichever country they represent and that's very important to us you know it's very important that we have an ambitious group of players we want amb good ambitious players to potentially come here down the line but we want the guys we've got here now to want to perform at the top end of the Premiership because that's what gets you international re recognition you know I'm I'm disappointed we haven't got more than, than Tom in the England setup but there is a reality we had we had three opportunities before the squads were announced and uh, you know when we, we lost narrowly away at Gloucester in a tough game we drew with Bath and we lost to Northampton well if we'd have put in three massive performances there it's, it's more difficult for players to be ignored and that's what we've got to keep driving we've got to keep driving that ambition of the players to be winning those games driving themselves up the premiership and representation will come on the back of that it won't it won't come on the back of one-off good individual performances it'll come off the back of the group of them working together and driving this club forward you talk about tom johnson there give us the latest on him and, uh... yeah tom is probably as good as it could have been in in uh, looking at the way the injury was caused he's got a very similar injury to that ben white had you know ben white's back now 100 percent flying so we're, we're predicting a very similar outcome for tom back 10 weeks uh, it's kind of a, an MCL tear it's not completely gone but it's, it's pretty badly ruptured so as I say it's one of those it's a non-operative uh, situation he'll just rehab now um, and looks like I said hopefully we'll see him back flying in about 10 weeks Brilliant. Thanks.